Great. So our second talk comes from Taiwan Cho, who is a PhD student at Virginia Tech. And Taiwan will be talking about hybrid projection methods with data-driven covariance matrices for large-scale inverse problems. Um, great, thank you. Hello, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, that's yes. great. OK. So uh, today, uh, thanks for uh, all organizers who are having me a talk today. So today, I'm going to talk about the hybrid projection method for some, some mixed higher priors. So this work has been done with my advisor, Julian, and the postdoc, Jiaha. She just moved to the Shanghai table, but we've done this by this summer. So I'll give you a start with uh, some introduction and problem setup. So the inverse problems is the consist of some input and forward operations and the output. So when you have some given images, but we observe something with some change, some blood, something like that. So if we say the input is the sum S and the forward operation is the matrix A in the simple case, and the output is the parameter D, then we, if we want to get the input for given output and forward operation, we may use the, some normal equation or some, some least squared solutions. However, if we just do that without some, any penalty term or some regularization, we'll get something wrong. So that means we need to have some prior on our input. So today, uh, I'm going to just use the simple linear equation is the A times S plus epsilon. So the desired parameter S is the size N, the A is the forward model, and D is the observations. And the added noise is the Gaussian distribution following the zero mean and R covariance matrix. And R should be is the inverted factorized like uh, identity matrix. Then how do you solve? Then we are going to use the uh, Weyes theorem. So for that, assume the desired parameter S is a part of the Gaussian distribution with mean mu and scaled covariance matrix lambda uh, scale, negative square and Q, and that should be the symmetric positive definite. Then the, by the base theorem, we can get the, the posterior, posterior probability density function proportional to the likelihood times the prior. So we get some this kind of the exponential function. Then by solving the minimizing the negative log of this part, we can get some solution as for this equation. Then we can use it as a solution to uh, inverse problem. And how do you solve this optimization problem? If we know what is the symmetric the factorization of the R and Q, then we can change it to the two norm. So then we can apply some known method. The problem is the while the R is the, we assume the easy to invert and factorize, but the Q is not easy in practice because the size of the Q is the N by N. So for the like some largest size, finding an invert inversion and the factorization is the, not possible. So to avoid that, the inverse of the Q first, we use the change of variable for the X, uh, S and D. So for our equation optimization problem, we can rewrite with some new parameter X and B such that AQX minus B for the data fit and the prior term is the Q without inverse. So we can avoid the inverse of the Q. Then our solution uh, after we solving this new optimization problem, we can recover the desired parameter S such like this. Then we have to assume there's some Q, then how can we define the Q and or how do we get? So first we can assume that if we have some training set, like in this case, we have kept the N number of the examples, uh, the samples, then we can compute the sample mean and sample covariance matrix. So as long as this Q hat is the positive definite, then we can use the as a Q in our optimization problem. However, in practice, 
the number of the sample, the capital N is much less, less than the size of the desired parameter N. So we would get the Q hat is not positive definite. Then we cannot use it as a, some covariance matrix. So to overcome this part, we can think uh, use the either taking, so adding a, some diagonal matrix to this Q hat to make it a positive definite, or we can find some Q, which is a symmetric positive definite close to this Q hat. So for that, we use the, the minimization problem with this the Frobenius norm. Okay, then if you solve this, the second case, still the Q have so many parameters because it's n by n. So if you solve for all entries of this Q, that's still not, not feasible. So we try to reduce the size of the parameter to define the Q. So one idea is we are going to use the kernel function. So kernel function is the comes up in many fields, so, but we are going to use it to define the covariance matrix in this case. So one example is the Martin family of covariance kernels. Then in this case, we use very many functions, the gamma function, modified value function, but we only need to define what is the new and error parameter, positive parameters for this function. Then this function only depends on the distance between two points. So just in case, uh, let me show how does it work, this corner function. So this is the one case. So in this case, I fixed the error parameter and uh, changed the new from 0.1 to the 1.5. Then you can see that this function is the decaying fast, but go slowly as the new is larger and larger. So from that, we can define some relationship between the two points depending on the distance. So from this corner function, we can make uh, some realizations for each case. So when you look at this, when the, the decaying is fast, the realization is uh, changing a lot. So more the independent for each point. However, as we get the larger new in this case, you can see that so realization gets slower. So by only defining only two parameters in this case, we can define the Q. So we can rewrite the optimization problem to find the Q only for two parameters in this case. Then how do you find it? Because it's not easy to solve the Frobenius norm. So we use the trace of the this matrix. And then this is equal to the expectation of for some, some, some random variables such that mean is a zero and identity the, becomes the identity. So there are so many, some possibly possible random variables, but we choose the, the Hutchison trace as mirror for by choosing the automatic distribution. So then we can approximate this optimization problem like this. So in this case, we parameterize our the covariance matrix. However, uh, there is a recent paper by the Brown and Bosley and Cui. They use the, the, the stochastic PD problems so to define the Q. So this is also very good to reference. Okay, so once you get the Q, and so, so far we checked the Q hat was the sample covariance matrix and Q is the symmetric positive definite, but defined by only two parameters. So we can get the two ways to get the covariance matrix. Then if we have two, then why do not use the both together? So as the reason we give some weighted sum between two covariance matrix. And then means, so in this case, we use the Q1 is the, from the optimization problem. Okay, then, if we know what is the gamma, then you can consider this is just one, the prior covariance matrix. So then we can use the, some, the gen, generalized hybrid method for fixed Q. But however, if we don't know what is the gamma, we must choose what is the gamma to solve the problem. So 
one uh, first step is the one one idea is the using the string quiz algorithm. This is from the area of the data simulation. So they use the gamma for the when the Q1 is the identity for and then Q2 is a sample covariance. But we I'm going to introduce our method to mix the Borokan process. Then we are not going to choose the gamma before the, our method. We are going to choose it in the iterative method. So for that, let me show the what is the uh, mixed Gorokan process. So for that, uh, we replace the Q in our optimization problem by the this weighted sum here and here. Then we are going to use the Gorokan by diagonalization with only Q1. Uh, one thing you should know that is the Q1 must be symmetric positively in our algorithm and Q2 does not need to be positive definite. It is, it is okay to be the semi-positive definite. So the solution we only start with the Q1, then we can change our solution. Uh, this optimization problem is the another so optimization problem and replace some our data fit term is something new. But in this case, uh, we still have the n number of data fields. So this linear uh, data fit is still large. So we want to reduce it to the so smaller size. So for that, for this red matrix part, we use the, some efficient QR factorization. And by using the orthogonal invariance, we reduce it to the smaller size. So this the red matrix part becomes the, this part. And what we can see is here is we only have 2k plus one data fit term. So that means we only need to solve for 2k plus one by k matrix uh, linear problem. So that's very cheaper than the n by n case. Okay, so then, so each case we are going to solve this optimization problem, some reduced to the some projected to the smallest space. Then we can rewrite this optimization problem by a normal equation like this. And let me say, this is the C, some simplicity. Then we can get the Y, if we solve this problem, then we can recover our desired parameter SK for each iteration. So then we need to solve this problem. We need to define what is the gamma, which was the weighted parameter for prior covariance matrix. And the lambda, lambda is the regularization parameter in this case. So we solve them by using the unbiased predictive risk estimation and the weighted GCB. So by minimizing either this part or this part, we were able to get what is the optimal, not the best gamma and lambda and recover y and s as well. So as a some simple surgery, so far uh, for training set, we've defined what is the sample covariance matrix and some round parameter with some for the Martin covariance matrix. And then once we get what is the Q1, Q2, but in general, the Q1, Q2 doesn't do not need to be this case, but we are going to use it because we are going to use the training set in the numerical example. Then we are going to use the by diagonalization for with the Q1 and use the efficient QR for some large size metrics. Then we can reduce to the some small space and then solve for the YK using the regularization technique for gamma and lambda and then recover the SK, which is the desired parameter. Okay, so then let me show the, some numerical example. The first example is the when you use the training set. So in this case, uh, we've used the uh, so 49, the, the synthetic data generated from the linear combination of the sine squared function with uh, some mask and some freckles. So the right side of the figure is the training set. And then true data, the target data is the still same combination of the function but there's no freckles. So this is the true one. And we've used the spherical tomography. So we have some rays here like this. And the size of the 
images 128 by 128, and we've used the 19 integral circles for each angles. Then uh, we've compared so many different problems for different covariance metrics, uh, the prior covariance metrics. So the hybrid method is the when you use the QST identity. And the RBRW is the shrinkage method from the data simulation. So they determine the gamma before we start in the iterative method. So, and then they use the Q1 for the identity and sample covariance metrics with known R, uh, the gamma. And then generalized hybrid method is the, from the Q run, which is the Martin, Martin covariance metrics, we determine before the gen hybrid. And, but there's only one Q. And mix hybrid is the, our method. We use the Q run and the Q had the sample covariance together, but we do not determine the gamma before the iteration. We determine this gamma at each iteration with the lambda automatically by using the WCCV or UPRE. Then you can see that uh, using the some learned, part, learned covariance metrics is much better than just identity or some shrinkage method. But this is optimal, so we cannot get this result in the practice. So we tested some uh, with uh, some UPRE function to choose the gamma and lambda or GCB and weighted GCB. Then you can see that they stop early and they are lower than the identity case or shrinkage case. So this top, uh, we've stopped it by checking the residual of each iteration. So this is the, some absolute errors for the uh, true data. So as you checked in the, the pri pri previous slides, the, the larger error makes some dark areas, but for the optimal case for the learned case for gen hyper data driven or mixed hyper, we get some more fight. But the second case is the what if we don't have the, some training set? So then uh, this is, we use the, some uh, seismic tomography, but we don't have much time. Let me, let me just go to the result. So then still, when you use the mixed hyper case, mix one and mix two, then it was better than just using the one case. Mm -hmm. And this is some reconstructions for optimal case. And this is when you use the GCB or you print WCB. Okay, so uh, in this talk, uh, I've shown that some training data can be used for private to choose the prior covariance metrics estimation. And our new mixed Gorokam hybrid method used the combination of the two priors. And we don't need the inverse and its factorization. And Q2 come from the training data. And we choose the gamma and lambda automatically. OK, so there are so still many open questions, but I'm still working on with my advisor and other problem areas. Thank you so much. Great, thank you for that really great talk, Taiwan. Um, Min Hong, do we have any questions from Zoom? No. Um, Marcel, do we have any from YouTube? No, also no questions on YouTube. Okay, well, in the interest of time, we'll probably continue. But if you think of any later, you can either put them in the Q&A on Zoom or come to the gather session and ask Taiwan in person. Um, right.